My name is Brother Jesse Muhammad, and uh, I'm here to uh, bring on Jihad Sharif. Uh, first, I'd like to welcome everybody to the Creative Spirit and the Ministry of Justice. I just want to give you a backdrop. Um, and this is going into uh, the legacy of lynching. So we have an idea and understanding on the Judas system or the judiciary system. Hope I said that right. Anyway, the Ministry of Justice has committed to carry on the fight of a lot of great people who bring justice for downtrodden people, such as, of course, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, the Honorable Dr. King, Malcolm, some people know or heard of them, Cut Em Loose Bruce back in New York, the Solar Dead Brothers, some of you know Jonathan and Jeremiah Jackson, Ida B. Wells, and our great heroes and sheroes of the past. And these I'm talking about the present, such as Don Luminous and Louis Farrakhan, the Honorable Warth D. Muhammad, Linda Jeffrey, doctors, lawyers, etc. But this person I talk about, Jahada Sharif, right here in our midst. This woman, she can't be bought, won't be turned, and definitely, definitely won't be traitor to her mission, which is the Ministry of Justice, to bring justice to us. As we have dealt with this Judas system, I know this means us in this in this dispensation of time no good. We need fighters for justice in our cause. We really do. In the sense of fairness. We all know that blacks, Hispanics, poor whites, everybody in the middle. This means a dollar sign to most people on high. But blacks in particular have brought or brought the bear uh, of the assault on us by this system, by the powers that be. We're the most oppressed and definitely exploited of the human family. When I look into Jihada's face, I see a lot of pain. I see a lot of pain, a lot of fighting that she's been fighting for years and years, not only for us as a community, but on a personal level with the court and her son. And I know when I see her smile, I say she holds back all this pain to try to make it better for those of us who are not as fortunate or maybe don't have the mouthpiece or don't have the heart or don't have the understanding or know-how. And he brings and she brings programs like this to us so that we can merge and, and get a better understanding of exactly what is happening to us as a community. Again, God has blessed her, Jada. You can rank her in the, in the list of Ida, Rosa, and Harriet Tubman. Well, she's right along that line in this time. As I conclude, this is one of the most successful capitalistic systems in America. It is, this system, this ability, excuse me, in America, it is the stability that holds up this economical system. It's protected by the police force, maintained by prisons, and the judge, and judged by this so-called blind white lady that represents a written law of loopholes, and only the wise can decipher it. This is evident because only the fools, the foolish, and the poor suffer. You must know, and you must be strong. You must have a strong spirit and an uncompromising will to see and to fight against this system so that our future would have a a, a better future, a positive future, so that we'll know that there is some light 
in this justice system. And there is somebody and some people out there that is helping to bring something positive to this system for us who don't know. There's a book called Without Sanctuary. Those of you who read it and those of you who haven't should check it out. The lynching, the castration, and the slavery of blacks. It's just to think about, this is something just like the court system. When I was reading this book, I, I kind of wondered because I, I myself went through the court system. Here overseas, here and overseas. And I know there's a big dollar sign. And I just wish that there was somebody who could help me see a little better in understanding this system. I just have three questions, and I ask you to answer them. Who the hand that strung the rope? What does the rope represent? What is the effect of cutting the oxygen from the person hanging? This happens to us in this Judas system. But I'm here to tell you today, as I know, we have golden scissors. No, we have titanium scissors. We have these scissors in the person of Jahada Sharif. As I know, and I would like to know a little better, Mr. Paul Burton, and those of us who would help put an end to a brutal system that's been using us for a stepping stone. It's a fight we in. In closing, I got this article, I was talking about it today, about uh, Christopher McCower, I think I said this for many times, about some murder up in Cape Cod, a black man and a white woman and it made national news. And as I was thinking, I was like, wait a minute. There are so many brothers and sisters out there who have been done in wrongfully right here, right in this audience, of people we know. They don't make national news. Matter of fact about it, they like swept under the rug. Most of the times they plea bargain, cop out, turn states, so forth and so on. And this is what happens in our community with this system. You know, it's time for us to stop being railroaded, to latch on to something positive as creative spirits in the Ministry of Justice. I want to thank you for allowing me to talk to you a little bit. Allow me to bring on my mother, our mother, our big sister, who has been a helper and an aid. Woman goes in the court, she ain't paid. Nobody funding her. And see, I don't like that. Because nobody can pull her strength, tell her what to say, what not to say, where to go. Because if you do, you won't get this. She lost a lot. She lost a lot to help us. And we should back this woman. So let's welcome with a long round of applause, Ms. Jahada Sharif.
Well, Jahana, that was such a beautiful interview that you have done. Uh, my question is to you, Jahana, what um, made you come up with the Ministry of um, Criminal Justice? Well, it's the Ministry of uh, Justice Committee. Well, you know, I see so much wrongdoing in our community today, Tyrone. And the people that you feel as though are supposed to prevent this from happening wasn't doing it. And in the meantime, they was like making things even worse. And, and I'm standing up there begging and pleading with courts, you know, look, this is not the right thing to do here. It's making things worse. 